Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. I'm going to do another exam question today. This one's on trigonometry and this is taken from the Edexcel 2020 Pure Maths 2 paper and it's question 10. Um, do take a screenshot of the question if you want to, otherwise I will uh, move the screen along so we will lose it eventually. Um, so let's have a look at this one. Part A is a identity that we need to prove. Um, cos of 3a. So straight away, I'll just move that up a little bit. Straight away, I'm thinking um, 3a. That's a multiple um, a multiple angle. Um, can't do a lot with that on its own, but we can unpack it. We've got a formula for double angles. So I'm going to write that as a um, addition of a plus. Oh, hang on. We need cos, don't we? Here we go. <laughs> cos of a plus 2a. So we can break the 3a up into a plus 2a because we know um, 2a as a double angle formula. So we can expand this out with the addition formula first. Maybe you know this off by heart. Maybe not. I think it's in your formula booklet if you're doing it Excel. But it's always good to know these off by heart anyway. So uh, the additional addition formula for cos is cos cos minus sine sine. And then um, these guys, the 2a uh, terms, we can use the double angle formulas. So we've got cos a here at the front and then cos of 2a. We've got three different versions of the cos double angle. Um, I don't think it really matters which one we use. We can probably flip and change between them. I'll probably use the one that's just in terms of cos because we want the uh, final result to just be in terms of cos. So that's 2 cos squared a minus 1. Then we've got uh, this term here, sine of 2a. That's just um, the double angle formula for sine with just one version we know. 2 sine a cos a that s looks a bit funky hopefully you can read it let's just move that up a little like we can expand this out now to try and simplify some stuff so we've got 2 cos cubed minus cos a um, and then we've got minus what have we got here um 2 sine squared a and cos a now we're getting there, we're in a good position, but we've got a sine squared and we don't want any signs in the identity. So we can replace that and turn that into a uh, cos. How do we flip and change between sine and cos? We use the identity sine squared plus cos squared is one. And if you need to, you can write that out at the side and make sine squared the subject to substitute that in. But sine squared is one minus cos squared. So I'm going to replace that. Cos A. A bit more of a bracket to expand now. A lot of writing, isn't there? Goodness. Cos A. Right, what have we got? Minus 2 cos a and a plus now. Uh, 2 and that'll be cubed, that last one, won't it? Cos cubed a. Oh, I think we're nearly there. We've got 4 cos cubed. That's what we want. Minus 3 cos a that's what we want isn't it 4 cos cubed minus 3 cos a yay brilliant always good when it works out that's part a now let's have a change of color and a change of question part <laughs> part b hence solve if it says hence in the question that means you're going to use what you used in part a so um solve this equation. What have we got in here that's from part A? We've got a cos of 3x just here. So because we've just proved cos of 3 times something is this, I think we need to substitute that in. So we're going to do 1 minus all of that stuff equals sine squared x. And I'll just change the a's into, sine, into x. Um, and then we can solve from there. So Hopefully you've got a note of the question. I'm just going to move down here. 
So we'll have what I just said, one minus all of this stuff and just changing the A into an X, minus three cos X and then equals sine squared on that side. Um, right, so we need a way to solve this now. Um, it's easiest if you have everything, like all causes or all signs. Um, we've got cos on the left-hand side, we've got sine on the right-hand side, so I'm gonna, gonna use that identity one more time to change that into cos. Remember, sine squared is the same as one minus cos squared. Let's change that. Because then we can rearrange, get everything on one side, um, and to treat this as a polynomial. Uh, so just expanding out or getting rid of these brackets on this side. Uh, that becomes a plus now because of two minuses. Um, it kind of looks like a polynomial, doesn't it? Like think of it as one minus four times a letter cubed plus three times that letter equals one minus that letter squared. There's a polynomial. Um, so I think let's get everything over to one side of the equation equal to zero because then we can think about factorizing. So we'll add the cos cubed term over to this side. Um, and keep the cos minus cos squared minus the three cos x and minus the one over so that will get rid of the one on this side they'll cancel out so we're in a good position because we've got a polynomial where there's a common term all equal to zero so we can factorize that the first thing we can pull out is a cos because it's common to all of them which is good news because then that takes this term down to a quadratic and quadratics are easier to deal with than cubics. So now we can factorise that quadratic um, as uh, the, any way that you factorise your quadratics. Everyone does it differently. I do a little cross symbol. If you've seen my video on that, it's a funny way of doing it. I picked it up in Scotland, I think it's this way. Uh, so it's going to be um, uh, minus one down there. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to explain how to do that now. It would take too long from this precious time, but you can have a look if you're fascinated. You can have a look at my video that explains it. Otherwise, do it however you do it. So I've factorised that now we can take out three sets of solutions. Don't forget this one. You might be tempted to divide everything by cos x, but then you would lose this solution. If you divide by a variable, then you lose the solution where that variable is zero. Because if you divide by something, you're assuming it's not zero. So you've got to have that one is zero as well. So um, it's best to factorize rather than dividing by a variable. Um, just try and remember that. So cos x could be zero. Um, cos x could also be uh, minus three over four. And cos x could be one. I'm just um, making all of those zero equal zero. Right, so we have a range given to us for this question. Uh, I think it's minus 90 up to 180. Do you know what? Because we've got minuses and things going on here, I'm actually going to just do a quick sketch of the graph for this one. Um, sometimes I use the cast diagram, but I think for this one, it's good to have different ways of doing things. I'm just gonna sketch sine, the sine graph and just block out the range that we're interested in because then I can see w how many solutions we're looking for. So minus 90 is here and 180 is here. So we're just in that range, um, this range here. Can you see that okay? Um, so w if cos x is zero, um, that's this point here, the red point. So that's when x uh, sorry, not there. What am I talking about? When cos x is zero, that's here and here. So that's when x 
is minus 90. I think this was included, wasn't it? Let's just put that on. Minus 90 and also positive 90. So that's two solutions. Uh, cos x is also minus 3 quarters. Where's that going to be? Down here somewhere. So I can see in our range that's only one solution, which you can get by putting the calculator um, if you're in degrees. So uh, inverse cos of minus 3 over 4. I think it's 139. 139 degrees. Um, and then cos x is 1 is up here, <laughs> which I tried to do before. Um, that gives us x is 0. Um, so we get four solutions, x is minus 90, 90, 0 and 139 and that is the end of the question. I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know uh, any thoughts, questions in the comments below. Um, if you've got any particular burning um, requests for questions you want me to look at, maybe from the, the British A-level syllabus. Um, yeah, let me know and I'll see if I can have a look at it. All right, take care. Happy studying.